Hey folks, Steve Vai here, and I'm so happy to be able to tell you about the evolution of the gem guitar. And here it is, and it's called the Pia. The gem started coming about when I was looking for uh, a guitar that fit my idiosyncrasies of my playing, and I designed something and then brought it to Ibanez to create, and that became the gem. We've had 35 years of amazing success with the gem, and there's no plans to discontinue it. It's a great instrument, still is. It's what I've played. The Pia is more of a new signature guitar that's sort of an evolution of the gem. Hopefully the gem will be in production till long after I've whammied my last bar. In the beginning, I also felt that at some point it might evolve a bit and change, but decades went by and the guitar started to have an audience of its own and actually evolved into a classic instrument. I was at NAMM and we were celebrating the 30th anniversary of the gem and the idea of changing or evolving the guitar a bit started to become very attractive. Maybe it was time to make a change. A few years ago, Steve approached us about working on an evolution to the Ibanez gem, uh, which turned out to be this guitar I'm holding right now, the Ibanez Pia. One of the most identifying features of the gem is the monkey grip. The monkey grip was interesting and quirky and uh, very much who I was at that time. And I knew that probably at some point I wanted to experiment with changing that. So I was looking for something that captured more of the entirety of the instrument. The grip here, this design, was also reminiscent of uh, f flower petals, the petals of a flower, which are the most beautiful part of the flower. It's also very reminiscent of the yin and yang, yang sign, yin and yang, which depicts balance. So we started thinking, where else, how else can we pick this up? And one of them was just the sharpness, because the gem has a very, it's very, it's got sharp, sharp edges all around it. So what we did with the Pia was kind of beveled these a bit and changed the contours of some of the, some of the cutaways to kind of be proportionate with the contours of the pedal grip, especially here. It was something I always actually wanted to do because then when I, when you sit with the guitar, it just feels it's more organic, more comfortable. The volume pot was moved down just a little bit. So then in coming up with a name for this new inlay, we called it the Pia Blossom. It's sort of reminiscent of the original gem Tree of Life inlay, but all of these designs actually pick up the dimensions and the feel of the pedal grip. So it creates like a synergistic effect. That started to hold true throughout the various design elements of the instrument. As you can see here on the back, this cutaway here, it was something I always wanted to kind of fool with. So now when, I'm, when you grip this instrument here, it's even smoother, it's even freer. Can, can I show you something really cool? Do you mind? Look at this. Okay, magnets. Isn't it about time? I mean, what is this where you have to have all these little screws and then if you want to change a string, you have to unscrew like six screws. And what happens if one of those screws falls into the carpet? It's gone. That's the abyss for a screw. You never find it. You know how much time you spend changing strings because of these little screws? Not anymore, brother. Love that. And of course it comes with the standard last four frets, one, two, three, four, being scalloped, similar to the gem. That's so you can really grab that note. Some of the other accoutrements of the Pia, of course it has the carbon fiber whammy bar, very light, it's called the ultralight. And then of course we have these Swifty knobs and they're kind of like domed and have this pearlescent kind of a vibe going on in the top, kind of very nice. And the actual color of the guitar itself is white pearlescent and we call this stallion white. One of the other things that I've noticed in the past with many volume knobs is when you bring the volume down, there's a tendency for the low end to kind of overshadow the crisp clarity of a clean tone. So I started putting these volume capacitors in my guitars, in my gems, and 
uh, what that does is it's kind of like a, it's a, a high pass filter. So it filters out that bottom end that is clouding up the tone and washing things out. And it's engaged by just pulling the volume knob up. And I decided that it would be a great idea to put that feature in the PM. And it's very nice because if you're kind of like in this volume range, the notes are very clear because it pulls out all this unwanted woofy bottom end. And then when you go all the way up, it's virtually a pass through. One of the coolest aspects of this guitar for me in its aesthetic is these pickup covers. They were designed by Mike Mesker, and if you look closely at them, they actually pick up various designs of the pedal grip. With the Pia, the Utopia pickup, or the pickup for the Pia guitar, not only do we have the laser cut cover itself, but we have an extra element that sits under the cover and coordinates with the color of the guitar. I think what we really have at the end is a pickup that not only looks great, but sounds great too. The pickups themselves are new. They were made by Larry DiMarzio, and I worked with his team extensively on coming up with this new pickup. It's, uh, we started out with an Evolution pickup, and I wanted to have a little more, little more softer top end, friendlier, and a little less mids and a tighter bottom end, and just a tad more output, so it's a little more powerful but they're sweet, and they work perfectly with this instrument. I honestly cannot say how pleased I, I am with the final product. All of us at Ivaness could not be more excited about the new Pia model. And to make its launch extra special, we'll be releasing three limited edition finishes in 2020, along with Stallion White. These finishes were named by Steve himself and are Envy Green, Panther Pink, and Sundew Gold. When I got the final instrument, I, I couldn't take my eyes off it. I, there was something about it that was captivating. I mean, like truly captivating. And even, even when I have it in my studio and I walk past it, which is many, many, many times a day, I stop and I look at it. It's enchanting. That means we hit the mark.